I'm Ash from Ars Components and I'm going to be taking a look at 3D printing filaments for FDM or FFF 3D printers. I'll go through some of the considerations that you should make when selecting the right filament for your machine and the requirements for your specific needs. It's important to consider carefully the filament that you buy for two main reasons. One, you should select the filament that is physically compatible with your 3D printer. And secondly, it's really important to select high quality filament as the quality of your output is about 50% determined by the printer and about 50% determined by the filament that you choose. To ensure you select the correct filament for your machine, firstly, you'll need to consider whether your machine is designed to work with an open filament system or proprietary filaments. Some machines are only compatible with proprietary filaments, as is the case with 3D systems machines. In this instance, the biggest thing to ensure is that you select the filament cartridge for your specific model, so that the cartridge fits in your machine and that you purchase from an approved reseller to ensure that you get a genuine product. Other than that, you'll need to consider what you're printing and which material is best for your prototype or your part. Other machines operate an open filament system, which means you're not tied to a specific brand or supplier. This vastly opens up the choice of materials and suppliers that you have. When selecting a material type, you'll need to know a little bit about your printer. Most printers are marketed to work with specific filament types based on the extruder and the temperature that it operates. Your type of machine will determine whether you choose a 3mm diameter filament or a 1.75mm filament. The next consideration is material type. The melting temperature of the plastic and operating temperature of your extruder will determine what you should choose. PLA is a popular choice as it's made from a renewable resource, cornstarch, and is odorless and less likely to warp room temperature. Another popular material is ABS. This has a higher melting point of around 230 to 240 and generally requires a heated bed or a temperature controlled chamber to prevent warping as you print. The issue with warping tends to get worse with larger objects, so the bigger things you're trying to print, the more of a risk it is. I've already spoken about PLA and ABS, but there's now a much wider range available for pretty much any application. There's nylon filaments, which are very strong and durable and are quite good for functional parts. There's flexible filaments, which give a more rubbery finish um, and can be bent and squeezed into different shapes. You can also get composite filaments, which give a wood, stone or ceramic effect. Um, and there's also carbon fiber reinforced filaments or conductive filaments, which are available, which can be useful for certain different types of prototyping. A further important consideration is the quality of filament that you purchase. As you'd expect, cheaper filament can often mean poor quality and this will definitely affect the quality of your print output. Poor quality filament can lead to issues such as inconsistent extrusion due to irregular diameter of the filament. Extruder failure can occur if the material is too thick or too thin in parts and with the result that no filament makes it through the extrusion nozzle or the, there's too much filament in there and the extruder can't push the filament out. It's important to understand the characteristics of the model which you're trying to print. For example, if you take a look at this clip, you'll notice that the layers which have been printed on top of each other have all come out quite nicely. However, once you get to the top and you've printed what's essentially a bridge, you'll notice some definite stringing. Um, that's caused because when you're printing, there's nothing to support each layer. So it takes a few layers to get a, a base there. Um, that can either be sorted out post print with a pair of pliers or a, a file, um, or when you're designing your model, you need to factor in some support material like hips or PVA. So I've spoke about how when you're printing with ABS, you generally need a heated bed or a heated print chamber. And that's because ABS cools at a different rate and it tends to warp and crack. So you can see here, this is something that we printed in ABS. Um, and as it's printed, there's been a definite crack and it's actually snapped in the middle. Um, to the point where you can actually break it. So you need to be very careful and make sure that you print ABS on a heated bed and you're allowed to cool at a slower rate. A final point to note is storage once you've purchased your filament. Over time, the plastic will naturally absorb moisture in the air, creating small water bubbles in the filament. These bubbles, when heated in the extruder, will quickly reach boiling point and completely ruin the print. It's important, therefore, to use desiccant dehumidifiers to absorb moisture in the air.